country to see what's happening on the roads. Thanks, far if you're traveling north from the DVP, a slowdown approaching Girard. That jam extends to Lawrence. Thanks very much, Dahlia. The rain is holding off for now. It is 11 degrees in the city, mostly cloudy, but expect those showers to kick in later tonight. Periods of rain, a chilly 8 degrees. Some more showers for tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. This is Here and Now. into the COVID-19 hibernation was expensive. On budget day, the cost of living is top of mind for many Canadians, from surviving as a senior on a fixed income to the cost of housing. What Canadians want their government to do to make life more affordable on The Current. The Current with Matt Galloway. Tomorrow morning at 8.37, 9.07 in Newfoundland and on the CBC Listen app. The CBC News is next. Coming up in half an hour, it's As It Happens. Hi, I'm Dave Seglins. A luxury yacht floating near Miami Beach is prompting philosophical questions because, well, it might actually be a mansion or a houseboat. We'll sort that out tonight with the owner's lawyer who's fighting off a raft of legal challenges. How is it possible for Mr. Trudeau's government to continue to promote the interests of the oil and gas lobby while we're seeing uh, the IPCC saying we are now at the point of almost irreversible climate disaster? It was only last week that the federal government announced a new climate plan that includes measures to reduce emissions from the oil and gas industry. Today, on the eve of the federal budget, the government has approved an offshore oil project. So how does it fit with the climate goals? We'll look at what the project means and the reaction to it. We also have details about what you can expect in the budget, including measures meant to make housing more affordable and more money for the military. Welcome to the World at Six. I'm Susan Bonner, also on the program. We have seen no indication that uh, President Putin has uh, changed his ambition to control uh, the whole of Ukraine. Uh, and also to rewrite uh, the international order. So we need to be prepared for a long uh, haul. A sobering warning from the head of NATO as some Ukrainian civilians flee the Russian military while others emerge from their homes after weeks to see a nightmarish landscape. It was already going to be a big week in Ottawa. Tomorrow is federal budget day. And with the NDP behind them, the Liberals are set to deliver on some significant election promises. There will be some new significant spending as well. Our national affairs editor, Chris Hall, is here to let us know what Canadians can expect. Chris, let's start with the major decisions out of Ottawa today to approve the Bay du Nord oil project off the east coast of Newfoundland and Labrador. It's a much needed economic boost for the province, but a highly controversial one for the federal Liberals' environmental record. Yeah, Susan, this was a tough decision for the Liberals. Climate Change Minister Stephen Guilbeault had twice delayed his decision before today. And here's what tipped the balance. Beta Nord will produce close to 200,000 barrels of oil a day when it begins operating in 2028. The project itself will generate billions of dollars in royalties and thousands of jobs for Newfoundland and Labrador, a province in deep financial trouble. Another plus, Equinor, the Norwegian company behind the project, says that technology being used will produce far fewer emissions per barrel of oil than other offshore oil projects, and it's a lighter form of crude oil, Susan, so proponents say that means it will lead to lower emissions during refining and will burn more cleanly than heavy crudes, for example, like the oil, Alberta oil sands. Okay, so transitioning to net zero by 2050 doesn't mean that we don't need as a country to use fossil fuels in the meantime, but it's being condemned already by many environmental groups and the Bloc Québécois as an abdication of Canada's role to reduce emission. Here's Bloc leader Yves Francois Blanchet today. This project kills once and for all any possibility for the planet to contain climate change under 1.5 degrees. One more thing, Susan. This decision that uh, Francois Blachet is alluding to is the UN climate change report this week that warned that existing climate goals may not be enough to prevent catastrophic climate change. And UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said that investing in new fossil fuel projects like this one 
is moral and economic madness. Okay, Chris, from that, let's move on to the budget talk. Tomorrow is the big day. What, what should Canadians expect? The main theme, affordability, the dominant factor in last fall's federal election campaign and a significant piece the deal reached with the NDP two weeks ago that will keep the Liberals in power until 2025. So much of the new spending uh, in Freeland's second budget, Christy Freeland's second budget, will go to address their own platform promises on housing and to meet some of the key issues raised by the NDP. What do we know about the housing plans? Well, it's a huge problem right across the country in big communities and small finding an affordable place to rent let alone buying a house increasingly difficult so some things to watch for uh, an initial investment to a housing fund that would encourage the construction of new middle-class homes a two-year ban on foreign house buyers who don't intend to live here and a home buyer bill of rights which would include banning the practice of blind bidding which experts say is helping to drive up prices and the NDP also campaigned uh, on a national dental care program and drug programs. Do you expect those to be included? I spoke to NDP leader Jagmeet Singh this past weekend on the House, and he said it was part of the deal he made with Prime Minister Trudeau. So expect the budget to lay the groundwork for those programs, too. The big challenge for this new relationship will be around climate change. That's a lot of spending you're talking about there. How does the government plan to pay for it all? Economists I talked to this week believe the government's committing to spend another $70 billion, including a huge increase in military spending, which means that Christia Freeland will continue to run deficits, although she's argued consistently that the country can't afford to spend more because of the strong economic turnaround since the worst of the pandemic passed. Talk to you tomorrow, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. You too. National Affairs Editor Chris Hall in Ottawa, and Chris and I will be hosting a CBC News radio special tomorrow on the budget. That gets underway at 4 p.m. Eastern on CBC Radio 1 and CBC Listen. As Chris mentioned, there is more funding in the budget for the Department of National Defense, billions more. That's according to a senior government source speaking on background to CBC News. The funding is in addition to recent announcements about the purchase of 88 new fighter jets and a shipbuilding strategy. As Murray Brewster explains, the war in Ukraine has given some long neglected projects new urgency. I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing from Minister Freeland tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. I'll be sitting beside her. I'm very excited. Excited may be one way to describe how Defence Minister Anita Anand is feeling. Her department is about to be showered with up to $8 billion in additional funding. A senior government source tells CBC News the new money will be over and above the defence spending increases the Liberals had already committed to in their 2017 defence policy. Leadership demands that we confront the challenges before us while building for the future. Canadians expect that of us. There will be money to modernize NORAD, the North American Air and Maritime Defense Network. The Liberals also plan to invest significant money in buying weapons for Ukraine. A source within the Defense Department says officials have already been shopping for high-tech Javelin anti-tank launchers and missiles. The government is also planning to set aside some of that $8 billion to cover critical equipment shortfalls within the Canadian military, a growing political sore point. Defense expert Rob Hubert in Calgary welcomes the additional funding commitment, but points out the 2017 Liberal Defense policy made spending promises which have been pushed off into the future. If they actually start spending $8 billion, once again, I'm so suspicious. By far, the modernization of NORAD, its cyber, radar, and missile detection system, is expected to eat up a sizable chunk of the new funding commitment, a cost-shared arrangement with the U.S., Canada's portion, according to independent estimates, runs between $4 billion and $6 billion. Jim Ferguson, a defense expert at the University of Manitoba, says improvements to NORAD have been planned for years, but never funded. This was coming. Uh, the political situation in Europe made it, I'm not sure if I say palatable, but certainly push the government to be seen to be doing something, particularly in the context of reported pressure from the NATO allies.